Uh, okay, hi everybody. Nice to be here with you. And um, but before we uh, begin with our science of triangles, since we have such a desperate situation in uh, Afghanistan at the moment with so many people vulnerable uh, after they have uh, given uh, so much over the last number of years. We want to invoke the Lords of Liberation so that the, what can I say, so that the medievalism of the past will give way to a much better uh, condition that allowed the nation to be built along more modern lines. It's a very dif difficult situation, but I, I, I've been talking with Joe here before um, we actually begin. And uh, let's just say uh, um, she has been aware then of uh, something Leone uh, Hodson in uh, Australia has written. And she'll maybe put the link, Joe, is that possible? Um, yeah, and I'm not sure. Put it in the chat for you. Yeah. And uh, the live transcription, well, it will be. It, I'm not sure how we enable live transcription for the uh, actual uh, uh, program itself. But uh, maybe there's a way if we had Michael Crow here, he might be able to help us with it. But it will be, um, it will exist. Uh, if you, let's see, Nasa, I have to make sure you're on the list um, of the people who get the live transcription. Uh, otherwise, you might just have to listen to, uh, you know, to me while we're doing that and then later see the transcription. But anyway, I'll, I'll say, okay, enabled. And let's just see. Um, I hope I'm not canceling us out here. Uh, live transcription closed. Caption has been enabled. Uh, I'm just not sure how this uh, might work. But anyway, uh, Joe is letting you in and we we will have what we have. Wait a second, Joe, I've, I've got, to, for some reason, there's a kind of a garbling sound when you're speaking there. I don't know why. All right, can you hear me better? Oh, okay, and there, there, I guess there's something down there at the bottom that looks like live transcription. Yes, they can select that. Yeah. yeah. Well, Joe, good. you're you're breaking up. You're really bad. Oh, she <laughs> called you bad. She called you bad. You're bad, Joe. Bad, Joe. <laughs> All right. So thanks, Bio. Let's see what we can do about that. But anyway, uh, I just want to welcome you all here and uh, just say uh, welcome to, uh, uh, of course, to Joe and BL who are helping us with all of this, keeping it as straight as possible, given my tendency to wander. <laughs> and uh, Martha Mickelson and Ann Peterson and Anna Sklar and Parker and Annette Ebbett and Ario uh, here from Finland and um, Astra uh, Ferro and looks like Aurora or Aurea, welcome and Catherine from Australia and Francois, I think from Canada and uh, Fred Saffron and also Georgina Sprague, Joan uh, Schofield, Karen Kritzka, welcome. Uh, Marianne Larson, uh, Sweden, 
and um, Martin Dupont. Um, I, 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 I should know where you're from, but it, it seems like some place where French is spoken. Um, Mayra Santos and Nesa Burroughs and uh, Nienka Rutterdink, welcome. And Risto here from Finland, Sari, welcome. Tia from Washington and uh, Vivian, welcome everybody. And Yvonne from Pittsburgh and Zenaidi, I think uh, uh, Switzerland right now. Welcome everybody. And uh, just to let you know, I'm continuing with these programs um, in Discipleship <clears throat> Volume 1, um, Section 1, Part 8, Video Commentary, and it's Program uh, 35 that I've just completed and sent it to uh, BL and to Harold and Joe to get up on the different uh, links. And uh, to some of you, I send directly. Okay, so uh, that's just one of the things I do. If you want to be one of those who receives directly, you let me know, okay? Um, and in that one, you do get more it's not accurate, of course, but you do get the link on the side that gives you the words that DK has spoken and some of the words that I have spoken. Um, now, because things are so bad in uh, Afghanistan and because so many people are vulnerable um, and uh, everything's on the edge, you know, and many people uh, are likely to lose their lives in barbaric circumstances. Uh, Tuya and I uh, have been thinking, and uh, uh, Olivia has helped to reinforce all that, that we'll do some work on Afghanistan, some uh, meditations on Afghanistan. But, well, you know, we'll try to help in the esoteric manner. You never can tell how it might work out, okay? So um, we will, but, but in some of these programs, let's do great invocation number two, where uh, the, the great lords in Shambhala of liberation and uh, uh, expressing liberty, which is denied there, equality, which is denied there, and fraternity between men and women, which is denied there. We'll try to make our esoteric difference. So let's focus on that situation. Uh, I mean, it's not only in Kabul, but uh, that seems where the present crisis is coming to a head. Everybody knows that one week is not enough to get vulnerable people out of the country, and everybody knows that if there is an attempt to counter that, it will lead to war all over again. And it's the, the Western democracies which uh, have the vulnerable people and all of the more progressive Afghanistanians who uh, helped them in the nation building during the last 20 years. So let's concentrate.
and do our best for invoking the the blessing energies, yes, and also these liberating energies, we don't know how they might work, but we do know they can work. And taking a very bad and dangerous situation and perhaps finding a way to contribute to the improvement. Let the Lords of Liberation issue forth. Let them bring succor to the sons of men. Let the rider from the secret place come forth and coming save. Come forth, O mighty one. Let the souls of men awaken to the light and may they stand with massed intent. Let the fiat of the Lord go forth. The end of woe has come. Come forth, O mighty one. The hour of service of the saving force has now arrived. Let it be spread abroad, O mighty one. Let light and love and power and death fulfill the purpose of the coming one. The will to save is here. The love to carry forth the work is widely spread abroad. The active aid of all who know the truth is also here. Come forth, O mighty one, and blend these three. Construct a great defending wall, the rule of evil now must End. Oh. Oh. Well, okay, friends, keep, keep this in mind and work esoterically. I think you can see, you know, from the words that are appearing below that they are not really uh, totally accurate, but uh, at least they give some kind of idea of what is being s said. This is... Um, obviously, a very Martian situation. And it involves the sixth ray and the first ray. These are rays when they combine, can really let loose the demons of war. 
Now, you know, we don't know the karma of all this, but we have to act with honor. And if we're ever going to uh, find a way to have a reasonable type of democracy supplant medieval barbarism, there will be sacrifices. So let's see what Julie and I can do um, in the coming week. You know, there's only really one week left according to the present design. And then the crisis really, really hits. But in these years before the coming of the great conclave, with all of its promise and with the extended teaching going forth, we do have the counterforce making a uh, a concerted effort to stop the uh, smooth into a new, newer period, which uh, offers the teaching and understanding of the new age at long last. So another crisis for all of us. It's not just the U.S. It's all of the democracies, and it's the Afghanian people who, those among them, who want democracy and a better type of uh, modern nation. Okay, friends, um, we'll take up your thoughts a little bit later. Uh, right now, we're working on the science of triangles. We did a lot of work, I think, on Mars last time. Mars is a god, of course, but a non-sacred planet with uh, one of its symbols being the cross above the circle. And uh, Mars has great value, but it can also get out of control and uh, keep us in a um, retrogressive condition. The triangle we're looking at here tonight, and uh, at least beginning with it, um, maybe we'll only do one triangle. You know, it's hard to say. Two of the planets, uh, two of the signs are ruled by Mars, uh, Aries and Scorpio, and there's also Pisces, but um, DK is calling them signs of uh, death. And um, uh, He's saying it gives admission into three planetary centers. And these three constellations in this triangle, see, we can link constellations and signs and planets in various ways. And in this case, they're linked by linking the three crosses and also that they are associated with um, the idea of death. Now, I think we do a little better here. Um, I'm not, right. I just have to make sure that 
you see what I'm doing. So, um, let's see. Aries, Scorpio, and Pisces. Okay. So it says, um, there are, uh, from the standpoint of esoteric astrology, there are three major signs which, in which the three deaths are undergone. Now, in our great invocation number two, that light and love and power and death uh, are mentioned. So we're not going to escape that. That's part of the transformation process. We've, you know, been through it forever. And I, that sounds like an exaggerated statement, but no, literally forever as it's impossible to trace the beginning of our experience with the great Mahamaya, which is the finite universe in the last analysis. So three deaths are undergone. So number one, Aries, uh, which at different points along the path of life force the soul onto the burning ground. Now think about that. Force the soul onto the burning ground. And I'm sure it's true that all of us have experienced at least what we would call the burning ground, of course. May I say that they have degrees of intensity. There are preliminary burning grounds and there are final burning grounds. And Leo, we've been reading, I think it's, uh, is it 473 or something like that in this book where various crises are listed and the final burning ground is given to Leo. So Aries, which at different points along the path of life, forces the soul onto the burning ground and subjects it to a purifying process during incarnation. Now, I don't know what color I can possibly use here. Maybe I'll use the red. I think you can see that. And you might question even in your own life now, are you on a burning ground? It's a bit like DK saying to his disciples, well, are you having a crisis? Because if you're not having a crisis, why aren't you having a crisis? <laughs> Those um, moments of decision uh, caused by countervailing forces between which one must decide are of the utmost importance in advancement. Well, as Aries is um, impelling the uh, impelling humanity into the new age of Aquarius, uh, we can feel that with all that's going on, the fires are burning, the floods are drenching, the hurricanes are blowing, the earth is shaking, uh, elements are out of control. Uh, if this isn't a burning ground for humanity, I don't know what is. 
Okay. I, I love this um, this next uh, statement. I've written a song about this called The Jungles of Illusion. Only it's really the jungles of experience. Anyway, through the lesser fire of mind, the, quote, jungles of experience are set on fire and dissolve in flames, and then the path stands clear and unobstructed vision is achieved. Well, maybe, you know, that's somewhat, it's a beautiful idea, and it's somewhat the mercury part of, uh, of what Aries can do through the lesser fire of mind. The jungles of experience are set on fire and dissolve in flames. And then the path stands clear and unobstructed vision is achieved. Do you feel like your vision has become less obstructed over time? I certainly hope so, and I certainly hope it's that way, really, for all of us. That will be the reward, shall we say, of adhering to this teaching with continuity over a great deal of time, as much of, of illusory time, <laughs> real in a sense, unreal in another, as we can uh, possibly pursue. We have to pursue with temporal continuity the uh, instructions which open the gates of deeper consciousness to us. Now, going on, it says, through the fiery processes of war and strife, and may I add, these are often very externalized in Aries, maybe in Scorpio too, but uh, certainly in Aries they are overt. Through the fiery processes of war and strife brought to the individual through the influence of the planetary ruler Mars, the god of war, a needed purification takes place. Well, basically, he's saying that war, for all of its horrors, uh, is a purifying process. And even with Mercury as the ruler and not Mars, the conflict aspect is definitely there. So, um, He, he lifts the idea from uh, purification through combat in a more outward way. Uh, he talks about the same purification, but this time through vision. Now, let us note that this time through vision comes to the developed man. Um, you know, turn to page... 332 and 333, the undeveloped, developed, and um, disciple initiate. So this same purification through vision comes to the developed man through the activity of the uh, subjective ruler. That's what he calls it, the subjective ruler. Sometimes we call it the esoteric ruler. But anyway, through the activity of the 
subjective ruler of the planet, Mercury, who is the illuminating principle which releases the mind, directs the way of man through life, and enables him to become aware of the divine plan which underlies all of his fiery experience. And, you know, maybe that Martian experience is the first thing, and then the reason for it all uh, is brought to him, brought home to him via Mercury. Uh, as an Aries type person, I can attest to this. I'm certainly remembering earlier times in my life when Mars, with all of its combat on the outer level, uh, ruled most of what I did. And then I'm remembering a time when the transition towards illumination via Mercury began to take place and a deeper uh, understanding of the light began. Now, it would be nice if Uranus would take over, which is the hierarchical ruler of Aries, and maybe we can look at our lives according to our rising sign, according to our sun sign, those two in particular, and notice the different phases of our life when different um, qualities of rulership take over. Uh, not that they completely abandon what happened before, but they seem to include what happened before uh, in a new way. Uh, somewhere he discusses this, I think, in relation to Aquarius um, in the transition from Uranus to Jupiter. Um, he discusses how the esoteric ruler comes into power without abandoning the presence of the earlier hierarchical ruler. So just go through your life and look at your sun sign, maybe particularly, or your rising sign, and see um, if you can identify those periods when that began to happen for you. And I will say that since people like ourselves are aspirants and disciples, and every true aspirant has taken the first initiation, the rising sign does have to be considered. Okay, well, that's the story of the first uh, type of death, but with, with, uh, with Aries under uh, Mercury, it's the death of illusion. Now, you know, you can question yourself. Um, it's hard to see our illusions. And in the book, um, Glamour a World Problem, I think he sets out seven illusions. And, we, you know, I think we'll be surprised at how easily we can fall into them. But Mercury will help in the overcoming of such illusions. Now, here uh, is the next sign of death in this uh, triangle. This one may be a little more difficult to understand, perhaps. Scorpio, which brings about eventually 
the death of the personality. Uh, may I add that perhaps because the buddhic plane is involved and it has a way of uh, seeing the personality from a perspective which takes away the relative power of that personality. Of course, it can be simply the battlefield. You know, if you think about, uh, let's say, General Patton, who, by the way, believed in reincarnation. He saw himself as an old Roman general. Um, uh, basically, it was right out there on the outer plane this tremendous battle, but as we are um, students of the esoteric approach, we're going to be interested more in an interior understanding of what Scorpio might do. It is, after all, uh, the sign of humanity and the area of expression of the uh, human monad on the buddhic plane, the so-called creative hierarchy of what's called the initiates, either the fourth uh, creative hierarchy or maybe uh, from another perspective, a higher perspective, the ninth creative hierarchy. Um, so it brings about eventually the death of the personality with which we shall later deal when it comes to consider that sign. Esoterically as well as exoterically, Scorpio is the sign of death and of uh, burial in the earth. Um, I guess I just don't have a good, as good a, hmm, I don't have as good a color as I would like. But, okay, I'll, I'll use this one. Death and burial in the earth of descent into the depths. And what are the depths, I may add? anything deep within the personality and the personality itself are the depths when compared with our true monadic home on the buddhic plane of descent into the depths in order to be lifted onto the heights uh, which is the mountaintop in capricorn eventually the mountaintop but then we have to um, undergo that humbling experience in, uh, in Scorpio before we can truly be lifted to the heights of clear intuitive perception on the buddhic plane. Now, in case we think, oh, intuition is an easy thing, I would say that we're only now standing on the uh, borderland of beginning to understand what is intuition or the higher type of pure reason. And that's going to be a task for the sixth root race. Uh, the concrete mind with its uh, lower type of uh, exalted thought, a type of pure reason, will come into focus during the next subsection, the sixth subsection of the fifth root race. Okay. So, death and burial in the earth. Are we suffocating? Well, from a spiritual point of view, uh, 
I could say that we are. We are not breathing the free and easy air of the intuition, which is not um, stifled by the density of the personality. Uh, it is stated, says the Tibetan, in some of the most ancient books that, quote, some of the most ancient books, I wonder what library card he has to get him into the library of Shambhala, I suspect. Anyway, it is said that the heat of the earth, the mother, and the sting of the scorpion are the beneficent gifts which the turning of the wheel gives to man at the beginning and at the end. Well, I don't know about you, I don't find that particularly easy uh, to understand, but we can give it a try. Uh, he goes on to say, these gifts, when accepted and used, bring a man to liberation. Now remember, may I say, Uranus is exalted in the sign Scorpio. And I, Uh, it was so for Sir Thomas More. It was so for Krishnamurti. Uh, who am I missing? There were a number of people that I'm familiar with, at least historically. Was it also uh, Sir Francis Bacon? who at that point of liberation, when Scorpio in a way helps to destroy the causal body, they had the Uranus in Scorpio. So, and the sting of the scorpion are the beneficent gifts which the turning of the wheel and we know what that is, that's life after life, right? Um, gives to the man uh, at the beginning and at the end. These gifts, when accepted and used, bring a man to liberation and eventually from the control and pain of the fixed cross. So there's something here about Scorpio, which brings us onto the cardinal cross. Now, it's not immediate, and the question is, when do you really enter the cardinal cross? And we've got to say, not at the fourth initiation, not yet, no. The, in a way, at the fourth initiation, you carry your own cross. And it's neither the fixed cross, nor is it yet the cardinal cross. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, just cut out this uh, area where the ancient statement is given to us and we can uh, ponder on it. The mother, of course, is earth, and the heat of earth um, can be understood as the kundalini in one respect. Um, and the sting is what wakes us up from our illusions. I remember <laughs> I was in Australia one fine morning, staggering around, and suddenly I got this horrible pain in my right heel. And sure enough, I had stepped on, or at least uh, was close enough to, a little scorpion, which um, made its presence felt. It was an awakening experience. And uh, 
I think anybody who gets stung by the scorpion maybe stops thinking about what he or she was thinking about before and tends to that awakening uh, pain. But eventually the, the pain subsides and we can enter onto the great cross which will take us for a very long time uh, into cardinality, we may say. Yeah, our monad is on the uh, that major cardinal cross, uh, regardless of what our astrology may be. Our monad is there, and the great um, adventure on the way of higher evolution is all governed by this cardinal cross. So, once again. The initiations number two, three, four take place very rapidly, relatively, and then a much longer period occurs, just the way it has been the case that a quite a long period occurred before we stepped on to the fixed cross. Anyway, this is paramountly Scorpio, paramountly the sign of death and suffocation and the presentation of the opportunity for liberation and escaping the lower Deva kingdom, which in a way we can refer to uh, as uh, the mother and there are some, well, let's stop to think of it for a moment. Here's the sting of the scorpion. And uh, along with it, in search of the rose, comes the thorny path of occultism. The, th the thorns and the sting. Well, look, something has to wake us up, doesn't it? because we're in a um, quite a somnolent state. We're, we're quite asleep to our higher possibilities. What can I say? We simply are. Um, and let's just say that the processes of life have a way of uh, waking us up. We, uh, in a way, uh, awaken to being a member of the human kingdom. And we're told back in those days, many fiery processes occurred and many deaths of animal forms. Well, now the times have changed and we're getting ready for the awakening into the fifth kingdom of nature. Now both, every time you wake up, maybe there's a lot of people who know what it means to say, oh, let me sleep. You know, they don't want to quickly uh, jump out of bed, as it were. But uh, when you are shaken, well, I don't think anybody's waking somebody up by applying a thorn to their foot or a scorpion or something like that. But uh, you have to be shaken awake. And that is the story with Scorpio. It has the means to do so. Now, those two signs are ruled by um, Mars. And uh, Scorpio has both external Mars and internal Mars and with uh, Aries more the external Mars. Uh, but then we have Pisces which is not ruled by Mars except in a sense the final decanate in Pisces before it uh, goes into Aries 
or gives way to Aries is uh, from some systems ruled by Mars. So what does it say here about, um, well, first of all, let me just put that Scorpio. I mean, I don't really have the right color, but it's crimson red uh, is what the Tibetan has sometimes used. Okay. Now, with Pisces, it sees, he says, the relinquishing of the death of all the influences which hold the man to the wheel of birth and release him from the control of the common or the mutable cross. Well, uh, Pisces actually is a transitional sign. When you're about ready to enter the fixed cross, uh, Pisces is active. And when you're uh, about ready to uh, enter a later stage of development and perhaps take a, uh, a, a kind of an incarnation that leads to Shambhala, then Pisces is also active. So the relinquishing, now what does that sound like to you? The relinquishing of all influences which hold the man to the wheel of birth. Uh, and his release from the control of the common or immutable cross. Because it's this common cross that kind of keeps you forever returning uh, in the reincarnation, reincarnation mode. Um, well, I, I just don't have the I just don't have the right color here, but okay. Um, now, what planet do you think of that can release you? It is another six-ray planet, right? It's not Mars. It's not Mars. And it's not exactly Mercury either, because Mercury has not only been powerful in Aries, it's been hierarchical in uh, Scorpio, and in a way is really the open door to the intuition. So what is it? And I would suggest it's, it's in one way it's Pluto, um, which it shares, uh, with Scorpio, meaning here is the planet of death shared in two of this triangle, two members, and don't forget there's another triangle called Aries Pluto Shambhala. So in a way Pluto is behind the scenes of all of these uh, death signs. And I would suggest that it is the also the planet Neptune, which rules Pisces in a, a very high way, in a special way, relating to humanity and which really uh, does give up, does relinquish, does release. I guess with the story of Pluto and Neptune, we certainly have a kind of liberation. Now, some people who were born, you know, in the late, uh, later 19th century, they used Pluto and uh, Neptune in a horrible way. I mean, they were 
mass murderers and uh, they were responsible for the concentration camps and uh, the horrors of war and uh, the idea of extermination, of wiping people out in large numbers, all kinds of people. But from another point of view, there will be a release into something which is um, uh, oppressive, a release into a much higher form of uh, expression as found on the higher planes, whether on the buddhic plane or even beyond on the ethnic plane. So what do we have? Uh, we have D.K. saying, it is interesting to note that each of these three signs of death in this, you know, in this triangle is to be found in a different cross, as I've said, Aries the Cardinal, and eventually the great sign of initiation, transcending even Capricorn, which is the major sign of initiation now, Scorpio, the liberating sign, liberating through conflict and struggle of an inner and uh, psychological nature, and Pisces on the mutable cross. Scorpio, the fixed cross, and Pisces on the mutable cross. Um, it is the influence, he says, of these three which brings about uh, the three needed and determined deaths. In other words, we are definitely going to uh, experience these, and to a certain extent, probably we have already up to this up to this point. Uh, the three needed determined deaths in the life of the human being. And I am here referring to the signs independently of their planetary rulers, but there's no question about it that the planetary rulers are also significant. Um, there is something in the energy which pours through these through those, these signs, says DK, which predetermines, now this is interesting, a crystallizing uh, process and the eventual destruction of some type of form control. Um, and the old commentary expresses it in uh, the following way, and probably this is all I'm going to take up for tonight. The, uh, the fire blazed forth, and through that fire I was born, uh, I died to life, and so was born to death, but course we have to uh, question ourselves at this point what is life and what is death it's not the usual analysis and then again I died to form so there is a liberation there and we can ponder on its nature and then for Scorpio the heat of earth, the fiery temper of the mother, you know, as it protests against the release of the consciousness from those clutches, um, which are of a devic nature, uh, destroyed the form, released the soul, and so the lesser self was killed. 
Uh, this is plenty to ponder, you know. And then, Pi uh, Pisces, the waters drowned the man. The fish was made to disappear. Well, we are the fish. It then appeared again only to die or else to die and bring salvation. So here is the idea of the coming uh, world savior, which those who go through the high Pisces experience um, uh, begin to express. Uh, these are not easy thoughts. None of them are easy thoughts, but they give us the possibility of pondering. And they do bring liberation uh, from the containment that we have considered to be habitual and uh, not even knowing it. We have been satisfied uh, to live in the realm of death. Well, these three signs come along and uh, they're not going to allow us to live forever in the realm of death. Hmm. Burning, suffocation, and drowning. These are the three methods and we will oh, we will get into that uh, the next time. So if I go back here and uh, you know we're not covering a lot of ground here, but if I go back, um, I'll see that really we've only covered one uh, part of one triangle, and um, but you can see they are uh, very ponderable, we might say, and so this is the end of a program, I guess it's, uh, well, I have 102, and... Yes, that's what I have, too. You got that, too. Okay, thank you, Biel, Biel and uh, program 102. Okay, good. And we'll be starting with program 103 the next time. It'll be a little difficult to know when it is. Maybe somebody knows. It looks like it should be in September sometime, but uh, I'll just have to. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, Tuya, can you? Is she there? She might be. Uh, well, she's, she's there as a guest, and I asked her to unmute, but I didn't see a result yet, so. Okay. I am here. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's all like the mic is disappearing. So the next time is the 15th of uh, September. And I'm doing um, this uh, uh, big schedule until December. So you will get that in a few days. Okay, that's great. Okay, 15th of September. I don't know, I find it so interesting when we go deeply into how DK considers certain triangles. Now, as we read through the book, we might just read right over this stuff. But then when you really go into it, you see the amazing interrelations uh, between the constellation signs and planets. This has certainly refreshed my memory uh, as to how these uh, three are interrelated. So burning, uh, suffocation, drowning, none of, none of them very pleasant, but uh, to be considered in an esoteric manner. And obviously what we finally want is the liberation, which will come to us when, like the masters, our consciousness is focused upon the um, triadal levels. That's where their 
consciousness is now focused and we want to of uh, that kind of focus okay friends i try not to you know go more than an hour with something on of this nature do you have any uh, questions um, any thoughts anything strike you as uh, significant do you find yourself on a burning ground do you find yourself no longer uh, or able to breathe more freely and to escape the suffocating effect of the lower planes. I sometimes think that when you look at the, um, the lower three planes, uh, our usual mental, emotional, physical plane, that we're in the realm of suppressed breath. Because in the formulas, in Dinah uh, 2, he says the, the air is the life. And before we get to the plane of air, we have to enter, I mean, that is the Buddhic plane, and in a way, that's where life, where livingness, really begins. Buddhic, atmic, monadic, and logoic. So sometimes if we don't wake up to the fact, we are suppressed in our breathing the great air of God. And then, of course, the drowning factor has some similarities with the suffocation. It also tells us something about glamour, and it tells us something about the magical process and about the Agni Surians, who come in two categories. One, the lower Agni Surians, and then the Agni Surians of the Buddhic plane. So Pisces really, finally, is the sign of liberation, even more so than Aquarius. With, with Pisces, we are liberated towards the monad and Shambhala and become eventually a world savior, if we're on that path. But the majority of the people in Aquarius, they become the world's server. This is the result of the... Um, fifth initiation. Okay, so maybe, maybe I've primed the pump a little bit. Do we have anything, BL? I'm trying to figure out how to be smart like Joe and attach something um, from Leone on the fall of the government in Afghanistan. Um, but I, at this point, I don't see any hands or Okay, wait a minute. Anne says, what is the difference between world server and world savior? I guess the, the degree of sacrifice. And one, uh, the world server is definitely hierarchically connected. And the world savior uh, has a still higher connection and is animated by Shambhala and the degree of relinquishment offered by the world savior uh, a much more a more difficult path I mean maybe world server is difficult enough but uh, the degree of relinquishment is still greater so it is not should we say the most popular path, uh, the most frequently trodden path. 
of course, the Christ is treading that path. And I guess if I were to look at it, I would say the Buddha, those two being the great teachers of the modern age, is treading that path. They've both had cosmic initiations, which is unusual, uh, at least at the present time. The Christ's initiation, taking him to the cosmic astral plane, where the factor of what we would call pure love is demonstrating in a much higher way than we might be able to normally fathom. And the Buddha, taken in a way even higher to the cosmic mental plane, both taking the sixth initiation. And, you know, th that, that takes them even, it takes them on a shambolic path in a way. But I think for, for the majority of us, who knows what we will think of in those days when the sixth initiation looms before us, having taken the fifth, um, which way we will choose or which way we will be suited to choose. We just, we just don't know yet. But the majority will take the Aquarian path of world service. And a few unusually heroic and relinquishing entities will take the path uh, which leads to Shambhala and which oh. demands everything. Michael, yeah, can I dear. add there something? You know, yeah. was it not so that it is actually Sanat Kumara who is then choosing those who are um, uh, fitting to the the, the rules of uh, world saviors. But it is not, yeah. as we were saying, about the common at all. And it is very, very difficult. Yeah. yeah I, I'm not sure, you know. I'd have to try to find the reference. I just know it's rare. And, um, and, and the other one is, is common. But as with many choices, um, there's something about the willingness. Now, there we go, right? That word, willingness. The willingness of the ascending master, ascending to the sixth degree, to either make that kind of commitment or not. That, that's in my mind. But I, I would be very interested in uh, coming to the reference that that would clarify that, that matter that you bring up. Or maybe we have been then to talking about, because he, Sanat Kumara himself, is the prot prototype of all world uh, saviors. So yes, some, that's somewhere right. we that's have right. been talking about that, that it is so difficult and it is somehow related to this um, Sanat Kumara's purpose. And those uh, yes, that check. would make sense to me. But, you know, as always, there are these hidden references. <laughs> They're hiding away and just one or two words gives you the clue. So, uh, look, friends, uh, we're a long way from... Uh, being faced with that particular type of decision. Uh, when, when we look ahead, we would say, hey, the third initiation of transfiguration uh, is to be prepared for. And uh, the Christ demonstrated how it was, and the three disciples that he took with them 
fell on the ground, a symbol, of course, uh, the a prostration of the three aspects of the personality before the transfigured soul, uh, it's a long way ahead. And then all of the fourth initiation issues, which uh, are very demanding, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> very demanding for us, lie ahead. And only then, when we're reaching the fifth initiation of revelation, and when the different paths uh, begin to appear before us, and the suitability of us choosing free choice, we're told, uh, any of the paths, that's when we'll be ready to make such a determination. So uh, this, this is speculative then on our part, and we still have to overcome, don't we, the world, the flesh, and the devil. We still have to do that to be truly mentally polarized and to go forward on the Syrian path of initiation towards the greater light of transfiguration. But we'll, Tutuya and I will keep our eyes open for the hidden reference that may tell us how that works. Okay. Okay, I, um, I successfully uploaded whatever it was Joe wanted me to upload. I don't walk and chew bubblegum well uh, at the same time, but and then um, Mary added an image, um, uh, the astrology that went along with that. So those are in the chats. And before that, uh, Mary said, when considering all these reflections that Master DK uh, has on the triangles, should we or can we add transiting and progressed aspects and planets to the natal ones? Well, uh, I would say, um, in general, yes, there are triangles formed by transitional movements, and they don't last, uh, well, they last as long as they last, and they are forming and unforming in our charts, and if a, a triangle of the nature that we have discussed becomes emphasized, then everything that is said about such a triangle in general may make an appearance within the uh, consciousness and the doing of the individual. So, of course, uh, if you have the time and the skill and the inclination, uh, I would be aware of triangles forming and then dissolving at different periods of your life. Uh, let's just say that, um, I'm trying to think, you, you might have like a sun, moon, and ascendant kind of thing. That's a very important uh, triangle. But the sun is in the early degrees of a sign. And the rising sign, let's say, is in a later degree in a sign of fast ascension, which means it goes over the, over the ascendant rapidly. Well, obviously, um, there, the, and the moon is it changing every two and a half years or two years. So right there uh, is the kind of setup where things are going to change. The sun, let's say, will still be in the sign in which you were born, but the rising sign will rapidly move through other impending signs. And if you want to, I mean, you can also consider sun, ascendant, 
and point opposite the ascendant, and then the s point opposite the ascendant will move. Uh, excuse me. Point opposite the sun will move slowly, but the rising sign will move fast. So there's a change in triangle right there. As for the moon, sun, moon, ascendant, we're always going to have uh, changing triangles uh, every two or two and a half years. So keep your eyes open for those things and see if it made a difference. I can give you a little piece of uh, personal memory um, I, you know, I had been uh, a, a person, a young student who was interested in music and also um, just studies, that's all I can say. Then the time came when my uh, ascendant moved into Leo rather than Cancer. Now the sun was still where it was, and the point opposite the sun was where it was, still in Aries Libra. But suddenly I took an interest in drama, uh, in opera, in stage, in all of those things that Leo is known for. I suppose that particular triangle uh, became activated in a new way. So, at the point opposite the sun sign does not always have to be the monad, okay? It's only if we're really ready for that, and few of us are, but it can be a balancing factor which balances out the general tendency of the sun sign. So, it basically, it moves the same way, at the same speed, as the sun sign. But the rising sign can be a point of short ascension or long ascension. And the, the sun and the point opposite can change before the rising sign changes or after. And you have to keep your eyes on those things because there's many things in astrology that determine the present trends and the science of triangles will be an important uh, consideration in in all of those okay anything else I don't see any hands and I don't see any other questions at this time. Okay. Well, look, you know, when everybody, when dealing with these triangles, the astrology of the future, basically, um, it's a daunting uh, subject. And Basically, we have such an interplay between energies. You wonder how it works out for the average person who is not aspiring, for the advancing person who begins to, and for the disciple initiate. You, you wonder what you're supposed to extract from these ever-changing relationships. So what we have here basically is, uh, I told you Starling David Hunter has made a lot of work on triangles and he's gathered, gone through the, the book and other places, and he's gathered certain uh, triangles out. And um, then we go back to the source of where he saw those triangles, and we try to elaborate upon them so that we begin to fill out, <coughs> excuse me, fill out 
the number of triangles that may be operative in our lives and why they are operative. And then you retain the memory of all that and your, um, I'm, I'm sorry, <coughs> and your um, sense of the interconnection of things uh, continues to grow. That's it. It's, it's just a slow process of uh, noticing interrelations and then, of course, how they may apply to you in your life if you happen to be, you know, an astrologer or maybe you have the help of someone that can uh, bring these to your attention. So uh, by the time we finish with this triangle's work, your ability to use astrology in this new way should have uh, improved somewhat, I would say. Now tomorrow I think we have the reappearance of the Christ. Is that it? At five o'clock? Yes. Is that it? Okay, yes. that's it. And then on Friday we have uh, the Glamour um, program. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. And Saturday the climate Okay, I can see that Tuya is, uh, yeah, there is this climate um, climate core, isn't there, that seems to be shaping up. So, um, well, Tuya and I have so many ideas about what we'd like to do. It's, uh, it's just a question of time and energy and uh, wishing that both were more abundant. But uh, we'll, we'll continue as best we can accordingly. So uh, I'm grateful that all of you show up and to our team uh, here, BL and Joe, tonight. And uh, uh, to you and I as often as we can be. And that's it. We just keep moving on. Um, studying with the Tibetans' um, unique formulation of words, <laughs> meticulous entirety. I love that formulation because when he um, deals with the advanced second ray meditation theme, he, uh, in Esoteric uh, Psychology number two, uh, he deals with inclusive reason and the meticulous entirety of it. And let's just say that uh, it may not be everybody's cup of tea, but you'll be better at it uh, as we continue to pursue our method. So, um, on we go. And, uh, dear, yes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Because I was uh, running to bring for you this cup, so I missed something. Did you talk about climate? Uh, just a tiny bit that there's a program coming up yeah. on the cl so, climate. <laughs> yeah, I want to emphasize that, that it is maybe the, the most important climate meeting forever. And it's going to be from the 1st uh, until the 12th of November uh, climate conference. So um, let us all, all start to unite and prepare the substance, doing whatever we can. And also for Afghanistan and whatever these crisis points are. So we have to be united stronger than ever. And we as maybe you said, Michael, that we try to look what we can do. There is a very strong heart calling to to do something that um, particularly to come together, but still um, 
before if we do not organize anything time-wise uh, that we have a meditation together. So, but let us meditate together whenever we can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did. I didn't say much. I just said that it's it's coming up, and BL reminded that it's coming up. So, so that's on Saturday apparently, and uh, um, I tell you, Tui and I could fill almost like every minute of the day with what we'd like to talk to you about from the teaching, but we have to be reasonable though we're both inclined not to be. So, and uh, maybe I should speak for myself. Okay, <laughs> anyway, we'll get in, and, and um, we're also planning some kind of uh, question and answer session about anything in occultism. Um, I'm going to handle one program for the Vietnamese people along that line, because of their location, uh, but but for everybody else, we can handle something very much like that at an hour that's maybe convenient for uh, others. We'll see. It's in our minds. Not to say that Shambhala and the new group of world servers and all kinds of things are not in our minds, and even our friend Sirius, which has the um, wonderful compilation by Zach Rymill. He's made wonderful compilations. We'd love to be able to take that up too. But, uh, well, well, we'll we'll talk about it. That's all. Okay, friends, that's it for tonight. Uh, reappearance of the Christ tomorrow. And thank you, communications team, for uh, being uh, present and helping in all these matters. And onward to tomorrow, uh, where we, at 5 o'clock, will do the uh, reappearance of the Christ broadcast. It's a broadcast, not, not a Zoom. Okay? See you then, and lots of love, and many blessings. So, bye for now.